All right, my friends, today I want to talk a little bit about the art of selling options. All right, so we might divide this up in a couple different videos, but uh, when the markets are volatile, the option market gets very, very profitable potentially. Uh, and so that's what we want to discuss here because I think uh, there's a lot of pros and cons to understanding how options work. What we're going to talk about first and foremost is just selling covered calls. All right. So we're going to talk about, I'm not saying you should do this. In fact, I don't do this. So you should not do this, but you should know what this means. I think it's actually helpful uh, for you as you're kind of engaging in uh, in day to day, not investment trading, because you shouldn't do that. But it's just the, the all the, the static that's out there on the investing world for sure. And, and frankly, there is, it is kind of fun. I mean, no other way around that. You know, selling and buying of options can be fun. It may be profitable, more often than not it's not, but I'll show you uh, how it works on selling covered calls, and we'll show about naked calls. I'm not really gonna get into puts that much. I don't have that much experience on either of the puts, a little bit, not much, but uh, certainly selling covered calls I did, I did uh, quite a bit in my younger days, because uh, it's the easiest option strategy there is, and probably is the most profitable too, in terms of not speculating, because speculating is gambling, investing is different. So let's dive right into this, and welcome to Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel, my friends, the place you come to learn all about investing strategies, retirement planning, the whole thing. Uh, and so don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, comments. All right. So a covered call. So let's look at how this works first and foremost. We're going to take a stock. It's actually funny how uh, how the mighty have fallen because we're going to use Walmart. Uh, when I used to do this example, I used to always default to GE, and I don't even know what GE is doing. But last time I checked, it's like nine twenty. It's it's just it's 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 amazing actually how the mighty have fallen, and it just happens. I mean, this is the nature of the uh, of the business world. Uh, it's, uh, I, <laughs> Was it a creative destruction? Is what uh, an old Shumter, Joseph Shumter, I think, is who uh, designed that terminology where uh, things are being created and other things are being destroyed. And by and large, that makes the life better for those, even though there is mass destruction in its wake. The creativity of human beings and the ingeniousness of us all uh, just makes a better world, generally speaking. All right. So it's just crazy because I was thinking about this before I did the video. I said GE. I said, oh, I don't do this GE anymore. So we're going to use Walmart. All right. So as we sit here today, and I don't even know what is, uh, I can't tell, but uh, today is 11 20, 2018. The last I checked, the price was 93.79. And we're going through a lot of volatility in the markets here today for sure. In the last, you know, basically last month or so. Has a dividend per share of 208. And so if we, we know how we figure out our dividend yield, right? So we know if we have a dividend of 208, that means for every share you have of Walmart, you're gonna get $2.08. And every share you have at Walmart costs right now, at least it did 20 minutes ago, 93.79. So what you do is you take your trusty calculator and you divide 2.08, oops, 2.08 divided by 93.79. And that gives you a dividend yield of 2.2% or 2.2%. Uh, yeah, I'm showing 2.13 because it, it changes literally every every second. The market is going to change. But anyway, you get it. You take to get your dividend yield. You take your dividend amount divided by the price per share, and that's your dividend yield. If you're not buying the price today, you don't care what the dividend yield. If you're not buying the share today, if you already own the share from many years ago, or if you're thinking about buying the six months from now, it literally at this stage doesn't matter. The only time the dividend yield matters is for someone who's about to purchase the shares. If I bought this at 100, my share price of Walmart, I bought it at 100, what would my dividend yield be? Would it be more or less than 2.13? Question. It'd be less because you take 100, we take 2.08 as our dividend and divide by 100 and it'd be 2.08. If I bought my Walmart shares at 50 and the dividend is 2.08 as what it's paying now, what would my dividend yield be? Well, roughly twice that, about 4%. So your dividend yield is only contingent on what you paid for it. It has no, literally, if you bought Walmart at 50, you could care less what that percentage is. You just care about the dividend amount. So, all right. So that's that's Walmart. So we're gonna use this for an example. So options work, I use the long-term equity anticipation. I don't even know what the P stands for. They're called LEAPs. Long-term equity anticipation promises or something like that. I literally don't know. LEAP options, longer term, usually over six months or so. And what that means is you take Walmart and you can trade on your thoughts if the Walmart stock's gonna go up or if it's gonna go down. All right, so now what, what a covered call is, is you have a round lot. You got 100 shares, 200 shares, 300 shares. That's a round lot. 
You don't have 63.56, can't do it. You gotta have a round lot of shares. And you're saying, look, uh, either I think Walmart's gonna stay flat or I think it's gonna drop. One of those two things, if you already own the shares, all right? So remember, if you have the, if you own a round lot of Walmart, you own 100 shares or 200 shares or 300, it's gotta be a round lot. Can't be an odd lot, it's gotta be round. I cannot stress that enough. And you say, I own it today, it's trading at 93.79. I think Walmart won't go any more than 5% up or it'll stay flat or it'll go down. And you say, but I'd like to generate some income from it. All right, so we know if you own the round lot, well, in this case, it doesn't matter. If you own any share, you're gonna get $2.08 per share. So if you have 100 shares, what's that? You're gonna get 20 bucks, right? 100 shares times 208 is, what is that? Or 200 bucks, I should say, times 2.08. Yeah, so you know for a fact, if you get 100 shares of Walmart and you just sit on it, as long as Walmart doesn't change its dividend, you're gonna get $208 as a dividend, which means you're gonna generate 2.13% or whatever it is uh, as a return over the next 12 months, regardless of anything else happening. You know for a fact, as long as Walmart doesn't go bankrupt, and as long as Walmart continues to pay its dividend, you are going to generate a roughly a two to two and a half percent rate of return on the dividends alone. We know that for a fact, regardless of what the share price does, we know. But let's just say you're pretty comfortable with Walmart in the future earnings and the future growth, but you think over the next year, it's not gonna do much. And you're like, man, that 2%, that's not doing me well. So I'm gonna sell a covered call, all right? And I'm gonna sell it under the anticipation that I'm gonna get paid as a premium, but I won't have the shares called from me. So selling a call means I'm going to give someone the right to take my shares at a certain price point in the future. I cannot stress this enough. There's two differences between the calls. And if you're watching in Europe, this is not, I'm not talking to you because Europe has a little bit more uh, limits on how you can exercise your call. We're talking American options, which is more of the, well, I hate to say wild west because it sounds like it's not regulated. Trust me, the financial markets are regulated like a beast. But in this day and age, in, in America, so we're not talking about you in Europe, we're talking about America. In America, you are saying, I'm Josh. I got 100 shares of Walmart. I like the fact it pays a dividend to yield of two bucks. I like I'm going to get $200 from that, but I also like to generate more income from it because, I don't know, uh, electricity prices are going up. The spot price of natural gas is killing me, and Governor Cuomo uh, eliminated pipelines. I'm living in Massachusetts. I can't heat my house uh, very expensive uh, without paying an arm and a leg for natural gas, so i got to buy some extra firewood, which, of course, as demand goes up and supply stays flat, the prices go up. So uh, because natural gas is going to have a hard time making its way to Massachusetts and because there's only so much trees that can be cut down and provide us firewood and me now we have more of a demand because people are worried about this crazy cold winter I got to get some income to pay for the firewood to heat my house I mean this is reality here my friends and this is how politics and reality work together uh, just because the pipelines are being restricted because of Andrew Cuomo all right, so anyway, at the end of the day, you're saying, okay, but I do have 100 shares of Walmart. I'd like to sell uh, an option against it. And so I'm going to sell a call. Now, the call is being covered. We're going to talk about naked options later, but for right now, we're just covered. So I'm going to say, I'm going to use, I'm going to look at three different scenarios. An elite option, a long-term equity anticipation P. I forgot what P stands for. I'm going to sell somebody. I'll sell to Jake the right to buy my shares from me, to call them from me. He's so, if Jake wants to, he can say, Josh, I'm gonna make a, it's not literally making a call, but I'm calling you up to, I need you to deliver those 100 shares to me at a set fixed price. So I'm going to sell Jake the option to buy my shares for $100, which is called a strike price, $100 within between now and June, uh, the third week of June, 2019. So I'm going to sell Jake. And again, if you're doing on the market, you don't know who the buyer is. You don't know, they don't know who the seller is, but just for simplicity, Josh has 100 shares of Walmart. My good buddy Jake lives in California. He's not as worried about the electrical spot or the natural gas spot prices. So he has some excess cash because he thinks Walmart shares are gonna go up above, not only above 93.79, but he thinks between now and June, they're gonna go up above 100. He thinks the market is way, way undervalued the benefits of Walmart. So he's willing, but he doesn't want to buy the stock outright, 
because while he's confident in it, he's not 100% confident where he wants to own the shares. He doesn't want to do that. He wants to buy the option to call away my shares if, in fact, his gamble is right and the prices go up above 100 between now and June 2019. Critical to understand that we've got two different competing entities. We got old Josh has 100 shares of Walmart, want to generate some more cash. I don't think Walmart's going to go above 100 between now and June 19. So I'm going to sell an option to Jake so that way I can generate some fees. In this case is $4.06. That's what Jake will pay me today to buy the option to buy my shares at 100 bucks. All right, so Jake is going to pay me a premium. He's going to pay, this is called a premium. In order for him to buy the call, he's buying the ability to call me so I would have to deliver him the shares. So he's saying, I will pay you, Josh, $4.06 for the ability to buy your 100 shares from you at 100 bucks. All right, so Jake is on the other side. He thinks Walmart has a good chance to go above 100 between now and June. And he's willing to pay four bucks to exercise that opportunity to potentially take a significant profit margin. I, on the other hand, doesn't think it's gonna happen. I think the market will stay down or stay flat or even go up a little bit from 93.79, but it won't go to 100 bucks between now and June. So I am willing to take the risk that I could be wrong and Walmart prices might go to 200. All right, so what happens? So let me just back up for just a second. So I will gather $4.06 from Jake for every 100 shares I have. In this case, it's 400 bucks. It was it four, I can't remember. But anyway, in this case, $4.06. I think it's 400 bucks, right? Yeah, sure it is. So anyways, in this case, is $406 for every 100 shares I have for Jake to have the, act, to have the ability to buy my shares from me at 100. All right, so what happens now? So let's go back to Josh for a second. We'll hit Jacob in just a second. I hope this is not too confusing. I know I'm gonna get $2.08 as a dividend, but when I sell the option to Jake, I'm also gonna get $4.06, let me get my, cap, my uh, pen here, as an option. All right, so I'm gonna get the $2.08, 2.08 from a dividend, but I'm also gonna get the 4.06 option. So I'm now gonna get $6.14, uh, yeah, $6.14 as a, as a yield, essentially. So I'm going to get 614, the $2.08 of dividends, the 406 to sell the option, and if you divide that by 93.79, Let's see, 93.79 divided by, oops, 6.14 divided by 93.79. I'm now going to get a 6.5% rate of return just on the income from the option and the income from the dividend yield. So I've just, uh, what, doubled, tripled my return. I was only getting 2%. Now I'm getting 6%. That's a tripling of my return from having taken on no more risk. I haven't taken on any more risk whatsoever. If Walmart goes bankrupt, I lose my 100 shares, without question. If Walmart went bankrupt, if I had not sold my option, I lose my 100 shares. So I have no more risk, because I own Walmart. The risk to me is Walmart going bankrupt. My risk has not increased, has not increased because I sold the option to Jake. In fact, if you actually look at it, my risk has decreased because before my risk was 93.79, all right? That's what I had. But because I just generated another $4.06 per share from Jake, my risk is 93.79 minus the amount of money I generated from Jake because the, the risk is at risk. How much is at risk to you as a shareholder? Well, if you have 93.79 and you're naked on Walmart, that means this goes up or down, your risk is the amount you could lose, 93.79. If I sell an option to Jake for 406, my risk has inherently been reduced by that amount of the premium I generated because now my risk is 93.79 minus the share price or the uh, the premium. So it's about 80, was it 84? No, no, 89? Yeah, right about $89. So my risk has gone down by about 5%. And that's the thing with covered calls. Your risk goes down in terms of what, you're, what you had before because you generate more cash from it. Now, we'll t I'll take a pause here. We'll take another one to show you how this works in reality when it comes to Jake and his ability to, to, to exercise his option 
and also what happens if the markets go down when I have sold the option to Jake. So we're gonna keep this out here. These are more longer term options. We've got June, January 2020, January 2021. We're gonna keep that, uh, we'll, we'll leave that up here on the left-hand side for the time being, but just remember, we got Jake has bought an out of the money option. I, just, I need to explain that too. Out of the money means right now he would exercise that at me from me for a hundred bucks. He's not going to do that because the price is only ninety three seventy nine. All right, that's it. So the price is only ninety three seventy nine. Would absolutely make no sense for Jake to take my price, my shares from me, pay me a hundred when he could go in the market and buy the same shares for ninety three seventy nine. That's called out of the money. All right. So he, if you're out of the money, it means the price is pay is less than the option strike prices. That just means out of the money. Um, I forgot what I was going to say that. But anyway, so we'll keep this up there on this side right here because these are all out of the money options. If you're selling covered calls, I don't know why you sell in the money options. I'm, I'm sure there's some smarty pants out there who can tell me I never did. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. I just I always exercise uh, sold out of the money options for sure. So just remember, uh, I guess we'll wrap that up for a second. Come back next time because I'm going to do the second part of this. And we'll see you here in just a second. Don't forget to subscribe and comment, but stay tuned because we'll do part two of this here in just a second. Thanks, guys.